Hey, how are you doing guys? Lewis here with Fedivo and today we have a really cool tutorial. We're going to be looking at Diffuse AE, which is a plugin that brings in the power of stable diffusion into After Effects. Now as a visual artist, I do have my fair share of quarrels with AI, but if you've ever seen any of the stable diffusion videos, it's that procedural glitchy like sort of animation. Uh, that you might have seen on social media. And as an After Effects artist, that sort of animation is stuff that I've looked to sort of generate in my past. So I think it can be a really useful tool. So if you haven't already, remember to subscribe and let's jump into it. All right guys, so let's get started. I would say this is a fairly simple effect to um, adjust and make some cool interesting effects from it. So we've got this video clip from the Fedivo library of a woman break dancer, it looks like uh, doing a dance in a studio. So with that, we're going to go to Effect, BSKL, Diffuse, AE. Now instantly we're told that there is no prompt selected, so we need to create a prompt. Now you can, by the way, you can also add the effect to either the video clip or an adjustment layer. Um, in the spirit of keeping things clean, I'm just going to add it to the uh, video clip here. But next we're going to take our text tool and I'm going to type in 1920s woman's fashion style. There we go. Now you can hide this layer as well. Now this is the parameters for Diffuse AE. Very easy to navigate. In fact, I would say for the most part, um, you don't even have to worry about a lot of these. So we have to choose our prompt first and we're gonna select our text layer. And then the plugin will tell us that a model has not been selected. So now we have a variety of different dif stable diffusion models to uh, generate from. By default, none of these are installed. So you will need to go to the model manager and see here, I have not got stable diffusion two installed. So you would click that, then select install, and then you can uh, use that model for your generation. I'm just gonna go to stable diffusion 2.1. Now what we will see is the first iteration of our prompt generation of 1920s women's fashion style. Okay, so there are a few things to, uh, to think about first of all. First we got the size limit and that is the size limit that the prompt generation is uh, constrained to. We want to put this um, fairly high, at least 1024. Uh, and we'll see the difference now almost instantly. There's um, a completely different look to it. And you will see that this is also affected if we were to lower the resolution. So I'm gonna select quarter resolution here. And while the resolution has been lowered, we can see that also the generation of whatever image was there has been changed. So again, if I up this to full, we see we're getting a, a, a more well, I say a more clearer prompt. <laughs> it's still quite abstract, um, but there's certainly a lot more detail to it. So again, if we drop this down to 512, we can see that the clarity of the prompt has become pretty much obscured. Put this up to 1536, and we've got, you know, a, a pretty, and now we've got a pretty neat looking uh, generated image. However, this is a very GPU um, heavy plugin. So even with a, a, a 3080 in the PC, I'm just gonna lower it down to 1024, just so it's a little bit more friendlier for the tutorial. Um, so now we've got iterations and essentially the more iterations that you have, the better the prompt is going to look. But as noted on the, um, the homepage for the plugin, the cutoff around this looking great is 40. So you kind of want to keep it under that or at 40 at max. Um, now we've got the prompt guidance and the prompt strength. Okay, so the prompt guidance and prompt strength can be somewhat difficult to explain because they are similar in their nature. They affect one another, but are also independent controls. A good way to look at this is that the prompt guidance is how much weight we are given the prompt. For example, with the prompt near one and the strength at 35%, we can see that we have little impact from the prompt on the image. However, when we increase the guidance to say 28, we can really see the prompt taking effect. 
Now the strength is how much of that weight we've introduced is passed through to the entire image. So even with a guidance of 28, if we lower the strength, the effect is filtered to have minimal impact. Whereas if we increase the strength to around 50, the prompt is allowed way more influence over the original image. In brief, the slider of the prompt strength will really help keep the original motion of your image intact. So that looks pretty funky. Um, and it's also creating some sort of ghost image in the background, which is pretty terrifying if I'm honest. Now, if you're not happy with the prompt generation, we have um, the seed parameters here, and these are adjustable so you can generate a different type of um, variation of the prompt itself. So, you know, any number will do. Let's go five, two, one. And we're getting something, you know, that looks significantly different. Um, it is noted as well that if you are just looking for a different seed, you can lower the iterations in order to kind of browse the seeds with faster generation in order to try and find the look that you're specifically looking for. And then once that is found, so say if you're like, um, do you know what? I really like that one. You can then jump back up to put this at 40 to make the clarity a lot better of the prompt generation. All right, so with the basics covered, I'll now walk you through the process of applying the effect for a real world situation. Um, so what we're gonna have is we've got this shot of this guy in the field, and we're gonna pretend that uh, you know he's with his detective partner and he says, is this the house? And we're gonna see this shot of this old barn um, in the American desert and the flashbacks that come into him. And I think what would be great is using the, the stable diffusion look to generate a variety of different textures on that house. Um, you know, instead of your classic sort of flashback blurriness that you would sort of see in, in, in a drama type film. So with that said, let's go to Diffuse AI. We're going to create a new text layer. I'm going to type, um, make house into a haunted house with different textures. There we go. I'm going to hide that text layer. Go back to the Fuse plugin. Uh, we're going to go to model, take it down to 2.1, prompt that text layer. Let's see what we get straight away. Okay. Uh, not what we're looking for. <laughs> so now let's start playing around with the prompt guidance and the prompt strength. Um, personally, I think we just, because we want to retain a lot of this image, right? So we don't want the guidance to be overly in its way. Um, first of all, let's just bump this up. You've got to remember to increase the size limit and the iterations before you start sort of playing around with the guidance and the strength because that, even though it's lower down in the um, plugins chains here, uh, it really affects, you know, I think as we just seen. So for example, I just started to mess around with the guidance before if I just press Control Z. So that looks vastly different. So, so for example, just to backtrack here, if I've got prompt guidance there and I look, lower the strength down here, maybe bring the guidance up a little bit more, you know, we're starting to get like this really choppy looking image which is not going to be usable really for a lot of real world situations but the moment we turn up the size limit and increase the situ uh, the iterations not these situations uh we're starting to get a much more usable image so yeah just remember to uh to uh, change the size limit and the iterations before we start let me just reset this go back to that 2.1 Size limit, 1024, iterations 40. So if I just turn this on and off, there we go. So all I'm looking for really is for the retention of the house, house's shape um, to stay where it's at. Um, in regards to the environment changing, that doesn't matter because I plan on masking that out. Um, but yeah, okay, so we've got an interesting look. Again, I might just lower the prompt guidance quite significantly for this one. We just want like a very minimal change to the exterior. If 
Okay, so now I think we're getting there with a change in the seed. So this is great because again, if I turn this on and off, we've we've got the shapes of the composition remained intact. And like I said, I'm not too concerned about the environment, but the house itself, we're not seeing a drastic increase, a uh, difference, sorry, with the um, house. So I'm going to go to the seed, set a keyframe and go to the end of this. And you know, what's that? Seven, seven and a half seconds. So maybe just change the seed to say 620. Now what we're gonna have is every second, we're gonna have a somewhat completely different generation of the house. Okay, cool, that is looking very, very nice. Okay, so now what I want to do is mask this house in order to essentially re-add it to this composition. However, what was one thing that I said earlier in regards to the size of the image will really affect the, um, the generation of the prompt. So for example, if I just, oh, that's creating a shape. No, it's not, it's creating a mask. Uh, the color of the lines really threw me off. So I'm just gonna make a really, really crappy mask a minute and look what happens. Yeah, see? So um, the size of the image will really affect the power of the prompt generation. So I'm just gonna delete this mask and instead, I'm going to render this out and bring it into a new composition. So as to what there we will then uh, mask the house out. Okay, so like Art Attack, if you're not from the UK, you probably have no idea what I mean. Um, but here's one that I made earlier. So now what we have is this. I've got this house. Is that something I remember? <laughs> And there now that's looking very cool as if uh, guys having a little bit of a flashback, can't really remember his past. Is that the house I grew up in? Is that where the body is buried? Is that where the gun is? Is that where the gold is? You know, that's really cool. That's what I think AI is good for is in these sort of creative circumstances. Okay, so there is two other models. We've got stable diffusion to depth. Now this is essentially when you want to add um, some image generation to a composition that has perceived depth and you don't want to affect everything throughout it. Um, we're not gonna look at that for the moment. We are gonna instead look at instruct pick to picks. So I'm gonna select this. And this uh, model is basically when you want to add something into the image rather than affecting the entire image as we've seen through the various previous examples. So with that added, um, I'm just gonna change the size limit and the iterations. Then with the text tool, I'm just gonna type add beard to face and hide that. And then let's go to the prompt, change it to add beard to face. And let's give this young dashing boy a beard. So you might not be able to grow one yet. We do not know. Okay. <laughs> All right. It, I mean, hey, you know, it's <laughs> it's giving him a beard. Whether or not um, that boy has remained the same person is, is another tale to find out. Um, so there is a reason for this. And if you notice, what we've got here, we've got image guidance, whereas previously that was prompt strength. Now, what we've got here is it's on a scale from one to two. And the further up the scale is the more we're gonna see of the original image. So if you have a situation like this where you want to add a, a beard to someone's face but it's really altered the way that that person looks, then you're gonna to want to change the, the image guidance. As we now can see, we're sort of retaining a lot more of the boy's original facial features um, than, than what was originally generated. So if I turn Diffuse AI, Diffuse AE on and off, you know, it's it's doing next to nothing other than adding this, this double layer um, on top of him. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. That looks good. Now, one thing I do find is, um, so if let's, let's change something that is sort of associated with a particular item. So for example, um, add sunglasses face 
Okay, so now I'm going to load the image guidance again, and we might see more of a, um, an example with a lower image guidance when using the pec to pex generation. We can actually see that the um, model is it's changed the sky, it's changed the background. So in this situation, if we excuse what the, um, the actor now looks like, it's really adjusted the background. And that's what the image guidance is generally great for in image pec to pex is when you just want to add an element onto the person rather than adjusting the background. So, you know, I will be frank, I don't think this is probably done uh, the best example of adding sunglasses to the person's face, but you know, we're getting the gist here. Now, I'm just gonna reset this one more because one thing that I do find that this um, instruct pick to pick works really well is changing the scene. So I'm gonna put um, add snow to background. Let me just run through process again. Okay, so that looks fantastic. We've got some snow in the background, but if you notice what we've done, what it's done as well is it's added quite a fair bit of features to his face. We've got some snow falling on him. Uh, it looks like he's got some ice growing on his eyebrows and stuff. So what we're gonna do is just increase the image guidance. because all we really want is that snow in the background. There we go, that looks fantastic. It's also giving it quite like a, a cool tint. So this is where I think uh, pick to pick really, works really well is changing the weather um, you know we do have now one thing I do find is obviously with this form of generative um, AI from stable diffusion is it does give the kind of the sketchy procedural look which can be great for some things not always ideal um, I find it tends to work best and gives you the real and um, best results as if you're applying an overlay. So for example, with this shot, I've asked it to change into Lego blocks. So for this form where it's just sort of like a blanket overlay, I think it's pretty cool. All right, guys, I've been Lewis with Fedevo. Now I think that's a really cool plugin and there's gonna be a lot of case uses where I'm gonna be able to use that uh, procedural generated uh, images in order to aid my animation or compositing, especially that that ban. I really liked how that could be used in some sort of like dream or horror sequence where the character can't really remember uh, what it was that he is thinking about. So um, as previously noted, this is a very intensive plugin. Um, you are gonna need some serious hardware to get some good use from it. That's why I've been limiting those videos down to about seven to nine seconds. And as also noted, this is a paid plugin. So bear that in mind too. But if you've enjoyed these plugin tutorials, please let us know in the comments. And as always, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next week.